Well, uh, first, I just want to thank the fans for coming out tonight and making it a special night for uh, the Neighborhood Longhorn program and uh, a great atmosphere for our kids, for both teams, and uh, just appreciate them for their uh, loyalty and their love of our program and um, certainly disappointed that we didn't play well. Um, you don't have to look any further than right here. I obviously didn't have my team ready to play. And um, I thought Baylor was uh, the more aggressive team tonight. thought they uh, really came in with something to prove, uh, had their ears pinned back, were more aggressive, more physical. And um, I just didn't, I didn't have my group, my group ready. So it's my job as a head coach to have that. And, um, you know, I thought Rory and Taylor and Shea could be up here too. Those three really played hard tonight. Like I thought they gave us everything they had. Taylor's out there battling and she's got a double-double with 13 rebounds, 15 points, just battling her rear off down there. Rory's doing her normal, playing really hard, running our team with seven assists. And she's got to take more shots than she's supposed to because nobody else is really going hard. And um, it just its really – it's, it's frustrating for, for me. It's frustrating for, for the ones that played hard because you don't win with three people. And um, it just, you know, we're, we're it just is very difficult. And uh, again, I, I'm, uh, I thought their four player really set the tone early. Um, number five just ripped us a new one and uh, played very well. And we didn't guard her at all early. They weren't even close, didn't even look at her. Um, you know, and, and that gave us problems early. And then, um, obviously, Sarah played really well tonight. She didn't play as well the first game. I'm sure she had something to prove. She made some big shots tonight for them, some tough shots, as did um, Asbury. So, you know, we'll learn from it, uh, I think. I think the biggest disappointment is that you're playing for a championship and we just, for whatever reason, you know, we, we weren't ready to go. And again, that's my responsibility. And uh, this is back-to-back -back Mondays where it's been like this. We had this at Iowa State where we didn't really have it and uh, coming off of a Saturday win. And um, you're, always, you're always concerned about coming off an emotional win like we had on Saturday, but we've got so much at stake. I mean, we have a lot to play for. You'd, you'd think we'd, we'd have a little more energy and juice than, than what we had. And again, I, I thought Rory and Taylor, Shea, well, they played their guts out. But we had 17 turnovers, um, six by, you know, a, a young kid. And um, we only forced 12. So we only forced 12 turnovers and we only had two steals. That stat, I don't have to look at the rest of the sheet. That tells me how hard we weren't playing. And so, um, you know, uh, 18 offensive boards, but we could only convert them into uh, 18 second chance points. We had 11 at halftime. I thought they got the big rebounds in the second half. But again, I just thought they, I thought they played them harder. Thought they wanted it more, and uh, you know, it's disappointing. But hopefully, we'll learn from it. We we we're obviously very limited right now. We had no bench tonight with Jacqueline out. And um, and Sonia's still out, so we played three guards. When I had to go to a fourth guard, I had to play a four-player, and uh, that really limited us offensively. So um, defensively was much better in the second half, but boy, the first half was not good. So um, again, disappointing, but hopefully we'll learn from it. Um, it was pretty painful to just, well, first, it was great to see that on the attendance part, it has 10,700, so that's very, that makes me very happy to see that. Um, that was probably, and of course, the seniors getting in our third night, that was probably the only two good things that happened tonight. Um, it's pretty upsetting to see that when I'm on the court and I look around, it doesn't, it doesn't seem like, it doesn't feel like I'm getting the same energy that I'm putting out on the court from, like, some of the team. And and I don't understand, 
like Coach Schaefer said, like you would think that we'd we'd give it our all after you know playing so well at OU and and being in first place and trying to win a championship. Um, it's like I almost take that personal because every time I step on the court, I will put my head down and do what I have to do. I mean, I'm gonna I'm not perfect at all, like at all, and I mean that's fine because most of the time I'm gonna play hard and it's gonna cover it up. And so I take like when when there's not enough effort and energy, I take that personal because now I feel like you're not you don't want it like anymore, you know. So that's how I felt, and that's how I feel. Taylor um, and Rory, can you talk about the? Uh, was there a little bit of a, you know, letdown after the big win at OU, um, and with the energy in the building? You know, obviously it wasn't quite enough to carry y'all in your limited, um, you know, roster tonight. Yeah, I think it was. It's really disappointing. Um, we worked really hard. Our media team and just everyone worked really, really hard to make uh, as big of a crowd as we got for our seniors. And I mean, we kind of had the perfect stage, and we had a chance to win the championship tonight. And we came out dead. And it's very, very disappointing, like Rory said, um, to look around and not recognize the team that we had 48 hours ago. And I mean, because 48 hours ago when we played against Oklahoma, that was a team that was amazing. Like if we played every single game like that for the rest of the year, I don't think that we would have lost a game. And to see the difference from that game to now is extremely disappointing. Um, it's eye-opening, and it reflects directly on what we need to work on, and we have a lot of growing up to do on, before Saturday. Oh, after? Yeah, one more. No, I'm going to do it right now. Uh, Rory, there was a moment in the first half where there was no one there to inbound the ball. And you kind of joked with the refs about, like, you know, we're learning new positions and, you know, there's still new players on the court. But truthfully, though, how, how difficult is it with this lack of depth and all these injuries? Do you feel like it's weighing on the team now it's getting to that point? Well, we've been through it this whole year, um, starting with just me being out the first five games and then Taylor and uh, being off and on and Amo, of course, having her um, ACL and – now Sonia and now Jock, <laughs> you just kind of like, like when is it going to stop? Um, when I said that, I actually did, I turned and saw you, but when I said that, I was like, it's like you almost can't really get that mad at them because they they're playing positions they've never played before, like ever. Um, you're ask, It's like we're asking a lot for them to do, and I mean, I tried my best to just make sure I'm trying to get them to understand, like get through it, whatever it is, but it, I still think it's no excuse. Like, I get that we are almost really dropping like flies, um, but I still think you need to play hard. There's no excuse to not play hard. I mean, wouldn't you want to play harder for those teammates that are, like, getting injured? Like, you don't want to be them, so you might as well just play hard. Um, but, yeah, to answer your question. We'll be back here. Um, Scott, turn on first. Taylor, so you talked about the team being completely different 48 hours ago. What do you think it is? Is it really just lack of effort? Is it the uh, communication? Is it Baylor, you know, guarded you differently? I mean, could you pinpoint that? Is it truly the other teammates didn't step up? Um, I think it's, Coach said earlier in the locker room, a lack of maturity. Um, we are a young team that's – actually, no, we're not. We have – a lot of transfers that came in and have been through the battles. And I mean, there really is no excuse. There's no reason for why we couldn't bring the same energy that we had to on against Oklahoma to tonight, besides just a lack of maturity. I mean, I think any team seeing the stakes that we had to play for tonight, the attendance that we had, and it being senior night 
would jump at the opportunity um, to win the championship here in front of 10,763 people. And we just didn't, simple as that. And it's really disappointing. Um, but thankfully, we do have another chance at it. But we have a lot of growing up to do in these next few days. Sorry about that again. Uh, Rory, I talked to Sarah about it. Uh, when she was at the podium, she said it's so great to see all the success um, from back, you know, when you guys were in AAU and, and now yeah. to now. What have you seen from her and how cool is it to go up against her on the court? I mean, that, me and Tara go way back. I mean, we used to always play against each other. She, well, a couple of years were a year older than me. And, um, I mean, uh, just another person I can look up to. She's just a great basketball player. She knows what she's doing. Um, I'm not going to lie, she has gotten a lot better, and, and I'm glad to see that from her, of course. And she played really hard tonight and played good and played, played, played aggressive, and she wanted to win the basketball game, so that's why they won. No, I don't think uh, I don't think it's. I think as we've gotten into it, we've realized that it's something a little more complicated than day to day. And um, you know, our our people are on it, but she's obviously not day to day anymore. She's it's something that's been lingering. I don't really want to talk about any, anything else other than the game tonight and the team. But um, as far as the rest of it, but um, you know, she has a, a quad contusion. And initially it was day to day, but it's it's obviously become something more than that. Um, honestly, personally, I I'm, I don't let this stuff flush. I can't. It's going to sit with me for a while, and but that's going to be be the fuel to my fire. I mean, I hope it does for them too. But. Since we do have another game, since we do have to move on, I mean, we just have to come come to work after these couple of days off. We just have to come to work and understand that what's at stake. We can't we can't do that again. Like we can make all the mistakes in the world, but at least play hard behind it. I mean, like Coach Schaefer says, like he he probably spent a lot of time this game coaching our heart. I don't think he's I don't even think he said anything about like many mistakes. Like yeah, okay, here we here and there, but like. I think every time I looked at him, he's like coaching somebody's heart. Like, why aren't we playing hard? Why aren't you denying? Why aren't you hedging? Why aren't... It's like all the little things that all you have to do is play hard. But like, like I said, we we have another game, obviously, so we're gonna have to just learn from this this day and learn from our mistakes. Sounds like somebody's gonna be a good coach. <laughs> <laughs> coach, is there any update or uh, news about Deanna? I saw her struggling to even sit down. Um, on the bench, so I was wondering if she's okay or. Yeah, I don't. I don't have any update on her. Um, um, I, I'm sorry, I don't. I'm... Hey, coach. These you mentioned the struggles with the Saturday to Monday turnaround. You know, it's not easy, especially coming mm -hmm. off an emotional win. But it's basically the turnaround in the NCAA tournament. You know how. <laughs> Let's hope they don't give us Saturday Monday. Yeah. <laughs> But, um, you know, that quick kind of turnaround, how do you kind of learn from this now and uh, how important is it to go through these struggles now bef before the tournament? Well, again, I, I uh, it's not like we've lost, a, you know, some three-name directional school. Uh, we lost to a top-20 team in Iowa State on the road, and then we, we lose to Baylor, who they're obviously really good, and they played really well tonight. I, I – uh, I don't want to put too much into it. I, again, we I, I played three guards on Saturday. Jocalinga came in for like a minute and a half. So these kids played. They played a lot. but And I've had kids do that a lot in my career. And, and it don't affect her. Uh, Shea Holly, she played her guts out tonight. You know, she didn't make enough shots, but she played really hard. Defended, held her kid to one for five, but um, it, it's just um, 
obviously there's an education piece to it. You know, I hope we can we can learn from it. But I think our biggest issue is again, it's we, we were down one more today when I really could have used a little bit of. Um, you know, I could have used Jockalinga, a big guard that could that can get in the paint and finish some things that we were. Or I could have played her at the four when Amina was really struggling. I could have played Jock at the four, and that would have helped me because again, we got Shaley in foul trouble real quick, and that didn't help our cause either. And again, all these are excuses, y'all. This is what happened tonight. And at the end of the day, we we all we can control is what we can control, and. Uh, um, we, we've just got to be better. At the end of the day, we're good enough. These, this group is good enough. I've got to find a way to get it out of them. Again, that's, I don't look for too many. It, it just has to, I have to be better for them. I have to get it out of them. Um, and, and that's it. As a coach, it's, that's just the way I feel about it. Well, I mean, I, I think – no, I'm not surprised. I mean, we've been in the locker room talking about it, so they, they just brought the locker room talk out here is what they did. But I think it's being accountable. I mean, give them credit. They're, they're accountable. Um, that's maturity in my mind. Why well, come out here and sugarcoat it and blow smoke out here and say things that everybody feels good about except us? I mean, we're, we're accountable. I'm accountable. Look. If that's it, then it's my job to make sure we get it from them, you know. And uh, again, uh, it's 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 part of it. And uh, but it's it's like I told them, man. We have a lot to play for. We had so much going for us tonight, and to see the the lack of daisicalness, the 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 lack of it of 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 doing things that we've been doing all year, and and just a lack of focus. Um, man, I, I, if, if I let every, like, I could have been beating my head in the floor over there with how many times we had things. We went from maybe having five, five defensive miss assignments at Oklahoma to we probably had five the first five possessions tonight. Post players not hedging, post players not in help. Um, I mean, it, it just was a train wreck from the get go. But again, that's my job. Teaching and coaching is my job, so it's it's not, you know, we got to carry it from one day, one game to the next. So it's my responsibility. But therefore, player came out and lit us up. We 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 weren't very good tonight at, at certain positions, and and so you can't win three on five. And so for them to come out here and be accountable, I'm I'm proud of them. If we're airing out our laundry to you guys, well. It is what it is. So I'm proud of them for being accountable. And you know what? Maybe some of us can can get a gut check from that because what we're talking about is inside your breastplate. That's what we're talking about. I mean, less, less are you surprised that they're accountable for this point? Are you surprised that this effort, of this effort of this team at this point in the season with what was on the line? I don't uh, – there's a side of me that's not just because of our lack of depth. Kids were – we played so hard on Saturday, an emotional win, and then to have to come back, you have to have a mature team to do that. We're, we're not mature. doesn't mean we're bad kids, bad team, bad people. You just have to have maturity. And that's what you have to understand. We've We've now done this twice, a Saturday-Monday turnaround where we've not – responded on Monday in a good manner. And today, again, it's just a, I think it's a, a maturity thing more than anything, and, and that's it. And, and that happens with young players, and, and, and we have some older players that were really good today. Shay, Taylor, they were really good today, I thought. Taylor wasn't perfect on her hedges either, but she battled. I mean, she's got 13 rebounds. She's down there fighting and clawing for everything she can get. Um, you know, as I told them, you're going to watch the film. We're going to see a lot of people standing around. Yeah, we, 
we, we worked, but we held them 26 points in the second half. So defense wasn't our problem. I mean, we got some really good looks and can't make a shot. Again, what is that? Is that they're tired, you know, mentally, physically? Uh, you know, y'all have to remember, not an excuse, but it's the truth. It's where we are. Our bye for Texas didn't come till after 15 games in the conference. 15. That's almost unhealthy that our kids don't get a bye in a bye week until this week or last week. And so it's, it's uh, you know, it's, it's hard, you know, especially with our – we're limited with numbers and um, our depth. So you said it, not me. <laughs> Um, building off that a little bit, the, the, you've preached consistency, begged for consistency, trying to find it all year. What are the impossibilities of finding consistency when you can't have a normal rotation, a normal lineup, because it's hurt, 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 hurt? Well, yeah, I mean, um, again, tonight we had, you know, our same group playing, but we were just not focused and locked in. I mean, um, like I said, we, we missed five defensive assignments maybe at OU. We missed five in the first five minutes here. And that's mental. That's kids, that's kids being tired in my mind. And, um, and so, uh, again, that's a, a mental capacity. That's a toughness. We're talking about toughness. And at the end of the day, I thought Baylor was tougher tonight. I thought they brought the fight. I, I, the game was officiated the way I like it to be refereed. They allowed us to be play the game, and for whatever reason tonight, we didn't want any part of the fight. And again, give them credit. I thought they brought the fight, and we just we got out toughed. At the end of the day, it we got out toughed, and that's my job. I gotta I gotta get us to be ready and and be ready, but. You know, it's it's uh, that's the maturity piece that we're talking about. Is your moment too big for Chet? I, look, I don't know. I, I don't uh, I, I don't know if it is or isn't. Uh, you know, some of them have never been in a in a, in a in an opportunity for a championship, high school or college. So you, you don't know that. And you know, here's my answer though. Really, if it would be, why would they play so well on the road Saturday? Because that was for outright first place. So, I don't think so. You know, at the end of the day, you know, we just – we kicked an opportunity here at home in front of our fans to really do something cool. We kicked it. Okay, now what are we going to do? Are we going to learn from it? You know, are we going to sit around the training room and let Rosemary take care of us and coddle us for two days? Or are we going to do something about it, toughen up a little bit? And I think that's that's kind of where we're at. I think we've – We've got to look ourselves in the mirror, me as the coach, and we've got to be accountable. Vic, is there any chance Sonia would be available Saturday? Or are you hoping for the Big 12 tournament or the NCAA tournament? And then, you know, you got a few days here. Sounds like you'll get Jocalinga back yeah. for K-State, but just talk about going back on the road. Yeah. I mean, you, hey, look, we're going to go play K-State. They just beat that team that we just played by 20. So... It ain't like it's going to be, you know, and, and they're way different than when we played them back on the December 31st. Uh, Jeff's done a great job with that team. So they'll have their best player back and, and some of their other players that have been their best players. And so, you know, it'll be – it's always hard going in there and playing. Um, I don't think we'll have Sonny – I know we won't have Sonny this weekend. She will not be available this weekend. So Jocalinga will hopefully be back. Coach, so you lost the game and that's bad. You also lost ten thousand dollars, but that's good. <laughs> so can you? I think it was one hundred fifty-two thousand. One hundred fifty-four. One hundred fifty-four. Six. Sorry. One hundred fifty-six. Can you? Do you know some of the other donors that oh, you yeah. could call out that they were sure. a part of this and yeah, and for uh, a great cause. Did I give you the sheet? Did I give you the sheet of the names of the people? Well, um, obviously, Silver Spurs were part of eighty thousand of it. Uh, myself, CDC. Now Maxwell, um, uh, 
uh, Dr. Cunningham, former president. Um, uh, Dr. Nurkin, um, and a, uh, Sam Ray. Those were all $10,000 donors. So we had 60 and 10,000 and, uh, we had 80 from the Silver Spurs. Then we had 5,000 from, I believe, Leaf Johnson, uh, automo automobile and, uh, um, um, we had one more, one more that Niall had got me, a car dealer. Um, I apologize. And then we had, we had six $1,000 people that came in here at, at, at in the end. Um, uh, uh, Tom Gammons, who's part of the automobile dealership, uh, Mike Wilson, uh, um, um, uh, Craig Williams, who is a buddy of mine and just wanted to be a part of it, called me at 1030 at night last night, said, hey, man, I'm in. Um, you know, just a lot of folks like that. I, I apologize that I can't think of um, the other $5,000 car dealer. Uh, but it was a total of 156 and um, just tremendous that we can help out. You know, great opportunity for us. We're honored to be a part of it. And help out the neighborhood longhorn program and i will get you that list so we can put that in the in a paper and make sure danny can you make sure you get that for me you guys but all those folks are really special really special people and i appreciate them doing that so much real quick the uh the breakaway foul of bugs on rory was that you kind of had a look at nikki on that um what did you think of that play and Rory, what I mean, what do you remember from that? Mm, I got fouled pretty hard. <laughs> um, anytime I get hit in the head, I I don't I don't think I like that too much. But you know, the basketball is a game of physicality, so it happens here and there. So I'm, I'm always gonna fight for my kids. I'm, I don't like it. I mean, it's to me, it's not even a play on the ball, but it is what it is, and uh, you know. Uh, we don't, you know, we we always try to be right, and, uh, and I'll have to go back and look at it. It may have been very clean, but no, it was, was certainly from it was good. certainly from way behind, and it's pretty hard. And I asked them to check it, and they told me they would, but they didn't. So um, again, I'm gonna be out there fighting for all my kids, and if I think somebody's doing something that isn't right, I'm I'm gonna be the first one to get in the middle of it. That's just the way it is, and because uh, I ask a lot of these kids, man, I'm, you know, I ask them, and they, and they, when they're giving it and doing everything they can, I'm gonna be right there with them, doing everything I can, and they know it. They know I got their back, and so yeah, I thought it was a pretty hard foul, but apparently I was the only one in the gym that did. I thought it was. Any other questions? Hey, I just want to say thanks for being here. Really appreciate your coverage. We obviously didn't play well, but give Baylor credit. At the same time, it was a great day for women's college basketball. It's a great day for the University of Texas and for us to be able to um, help the Neighborhood Longhorn program like we were able to do. And it was obviously a great day for our seniors. And Nisa and Fom have been a great deal to our program. You talk about two great kids, kids that you, you've heard coaches talk about energy vampires. Those kids are nothing close to that. They have never had a bad day uh, in practice. They, they give everything they have. They're wonderful young ladies. They make good grades. I have had to deal with absolutely zero, zero negative with those kids. They are a joy to coach. They've made me better as a coach, as a father, as a husband, as a man. And I'm honored to have had the opportunity to coach them. And uh, we are all better that Fahm and Anissa are a part of this program. And to think that Anissa, I saw her sitting outside when I'd go out the weight room door over at Cooley and go on my run, and I'd come back, she's still sitting out there, and I'd think, why is that kid still here? It is hot out here. And finally one day she gives me that envelope asking if she can have a chance to, to walk on. And, um, you know, for walk-ons, y'all, coaches don't want drill busters. 
If you're going to take a walk on, they better be really good in the classroom and they better not be a drill buster. And she's really good in the classroom and she is a long way from a drill buster. And, and I think what you found, we found out is she's a great teammate, a great friend, a great young lady. Um, parents are tremendous. They've made the kids cookies, cupcakes, stuff. You know, when, when we go over to Helping Hands, y'all, she brings stuff to the kids at Helping Hands, homemade goodies from her family. I mean, she's just a wonderful kid. And, and, and then Fom, I couldn't do it, y'all. There's no way at her age, when I was her age, that I could have left my family and gone across the big water to do anything for a week. I don't care if they would have told me I was going to go over there and catch my limit and I could go fishing and kill my limit. I, I couldn't have done it. She's done it for three, four years, five years. And she's really close with her mother. She talks to her every day. I have so much respect and admiration for someone like that and for FOM in particular. And I'm just, again, honored to have had the opportunity to coach those kids. And they really bring a lot to the table, y'all. It's a great example, y'all, of what you bring to a team and to the table. And it has nothing to do with points, rebounds, and assists. And those kids bring a lot. So we're really thankful for them. And again, thank y'all for being here. Thank you. Praise the Lord and hook them on.